First at four, Northern Michigan gets a jump on the holiday, but more freedom this weekend comes with responsibility for all of us. Ben, what about the forecast? Yeah, Karen, now that the weekend is here, we're looking at near record heat plus chances of thunderstorms, and it's all coming in the next three days. Good afternoon, Paula. Hi, Ben. Hi, everyone. Listen, if you thought all of those summer internships and earning opportunities were gone because of COVID, think again. We have an incredible resource guide for you and your students. These stories and more are happening right now on Local 4, First at 4. Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Drew. First at four, we made it to the Memorial Day weekend, the unofficial start of summer. Of course, this weekend will not feel the same as in years past. The coronavirus hangs over just about everything we do. Kimberly Gill in the newsroom with a look at some of the changes going into effect. Kim. Yeah. Hi, Karen. Good afternoon. Restaurants and bars have opened in northern Michigan with restrictions uh, as those were lifted in those areas overnight. Governor Whitmer has also loosened one rule that will probably affect many of your Memorial Day plans here in Metro Detroit. That change allows gatherings of 10 people or less for the first time in about two months, giving you a chance to visit family and friends this holiday. Of course, all the precautions we've come to know must be in place to keep everybody healthy. In some cases, masks may be necessary. Maintain social distancing, clean your hands, and if you feel sick, stay home. The state's stay at home order is in effect until May 28th, and the governor hinted it will be extended further. In Detroit, Mayor Mike Duggan just warned police will watch for gatherings that get too large. So as the weather improves and you're out in the parks, you can be in gatherings of up to 10, but you still need to space out within those gatherings. If you get up to 11 or 12, the police will uh, politely ask you to reduce the size. Uh, but uh, uh, short of that, uh, this could be a time to enjoy the weekend. Yeah, we hope so. And meanwhile, bars and restaurants are open in the UP and in the Traverse City area. We saw people inside for breakfast at Joe's Coney and Houghton Lake. Customers telling us it's nice to enjoy a meal there instead of taking it home. The owner has moved some tables outside and says he is hopeful he'll be busy for the holiday weekend and throughout the summer. You know, we have no idea what to expect. We're just hoping for the best. We're praying we're always going to keep our place clean. We're going to open to as many tables and chairs as we can, as long hours as we can stay awake. And just pray that we have a good year before it starts snowing. Yeah. Well, bars and restaurants reopening are limited to 50% capacity. Groups of uh, diners are expected to be six feet apart, and servers have to wear face coverings. So uh, basically, Karen, the governor is hoping people will be responsible over the next two weeks. She wants to be sure nothing we're doing now leads to a new surge of the virus. Governor Whitmer says if we avoid a surge, more regions and more businesses can start to reopen. Karen, we'll send it back to you. All right. Thank you, Kim. Well, if you are looking to venture out, the forecast is critical and a flooding threat we have been following is receding. So let's bring in Ben Bailey for the latest. Ben. Yeah, Karen, it is looking a whole lot like summer this weekend, and I know a lot of folks itching to get out. If you are getting out of town uh, tonight, here's for live radar. We still have some light showers on the east side, but the further west you get, the drier things become, especially as you're taking 94, 96 under the west side of the state. Not much going on there. A couple showers, though, as you get up into central portions of Michigan, north of Lansing, it looks like some of that rain still connecting there uh, as it heads out towards Lake Michigan. Otherwise, we've got a lot of heat to get through in the next three days. Tomorrow will be by, by far the coolest and most or least humid, I should say, 75. Sunday and Monday, those are going to be near record highs, 84 Sunday. 88 on Monday, but with high levels of humidity, we're talking heat index readings that are at least going to hit 90 and maybe even into the low 90s. So we're not used to this, uh, especially being inside for the last several weeks. We've got to sort of take it easy, but it is going to be hot this week and more on that in just a few minutes, Karen. All right. Thank you, Ben. President Donald Trump wants churches, synagogues and mosques to open immediately. He held an extremely short press briefing this afternoon, speaking for just about two minutes. The president is urging all governors to open places of worship. The ministers, pastors, rabbis, imams and other faith leaders will make sure that their congregations are safe as they gather and pray. I know them well. They love their congregations. They love their people. They don't want anything bad to happen to them or to anybody else. 
The governors need to do the right thing and allow these very important essential places of faith to open right now for this weekend. If they don't do it, I will override the governors. Now, it's not exactly clear if President Trump has the authority to override governors in any state. Governor Whitmer's orders have not penalized places of worship for public gatherings. We did, should point out, large gatherings and enclosed spaces have been linked to outbreaks of the virus when very strict protocols are not followed. Here in Michigan, the spread of the virus is slowing. There were still, though, 400 new cases recorded in the past 24 hours. State also reports 29 additional deaths, bringing the total to more than 5,100. This Memorial Day weekend will be painful for thousands of people in mid-Michigan. They're still displaced by those floodwaters that poured over the dams in Edenville and Sanford. We're in Sanford today, as some people are allowed to survey what's left, if anything, of their homes. President Trump did sign a federal emergency declaration yesterday while he was in Michigan. And there are concerns about a Dow chemical cleanup that was in the works. Regulators say it's too soon to judge the flood's impact. Many residents already know their lives will never be the same. It's heartbreaking. It's like a movie. It's, uh... It doesn't make no sense. It doesn't make any sense. It should never happen. None of us should have been down here. We've been trying to get out since seven, the flood of 17. Sean Lay is talking to the homeowners about their frustrations. His story from Sanford, new at five. Summertime is a critical time for teenagers to get job experience or internships building towards their futures. COVID-19 makes that more difficult, but all hope is not lost. Paula Tutman shows you how to get creative to find those opportunities in spite of the pandemic. For many kids, a summer job is not a hobby or pocket change or something to keep busy. It is a must. But to get money for college, to pay for things like books. Education and career experts agree that while the paid and unpaid internship picture looks bleak, it is anything but. Tons of parents right now are seeking online tutoring, online education for their kids. I just had a great conversation with a company called uh, GoPeer, which is a company that does private tutoring. They only hire college students to do private tutoring for K through 12 students. And so they're paying college students $20 an hour. Do a quick search online using the following keywords in the search engine, online, remote, internships, applications, and freelancer, and then be excited by what pops up. There are businesses looking for writers, businesses looking for designers, businesses looking for coders. PureMichigan.org has a site just dedicated to helping teenagers find internships. They're looking for help planning and executing virtual programs. So we can't visit the Detroit Institute of Arts and we can't go to the Jim Bury program at the local community house. But these young people can help us provide these virtually. The really savvy college or high schooler will create their own gig in this gig economy. Students can offer a few hours of virtual babysitting with stories and crafts to engage little ones so parents can get uninterrupted work time at home. Innovate, if you will, make lemonade out of lemon. Detroit did a complete pivot and figured out ways to turn its summer jobs program into remote opportunities. Grow Detroit's young talent has put Detroit's young people to work with businesses around the city. And this year they've gone completely remote, says Marie Hawker, executive director of GDYT by pivoting to an online platform, EDSI and Virtual Job Shadow, which put young people in paid positions inside firms virtually. Even in spite of COVID-19, we still intend to deliver meaningful work experiences for our young people this year. Samaria says she needs one of these remote opportunities because she'll go out and find a job if she has to, but she is afraid. That it's going to be somewhat uncomfortable, but it's something that I'm going to have to do if I want to further my education. Yeah, so these remote internships, they are out there. They are available. All right, come on, everybody. A collective hoosa for parents and students alike. Our experts gave us great resources, and so we have put a resource guide with the links to find some of these internships on our homepage and, of course, clickondetroit.com. Karen? Really inspiring here, Paula, because I think a lot of people were doom and gloom as they were entering the summer and thought they could only maybe find a couple little jobs out there. But there is hope 
and we love that. So thank you. It, we appreciate it. I was really excited. Yeah, yeah you're definitely. Welcome. All right. Still ahead here first at four. It is one of the biggest sale events of the summer, but could it be pushed into the fall this year? Also, lawmakers pushing, shoving. Two men are carried out of a meeting. This place was an international hotspot last year, and things are heating up again. Up first, we're learning more about the third arrest in the Ahmad Aubrey shooting. This suspect says he did nothing wrong. How investigators are responding this afternoon when we come back. Food for Frontline is helping keep our essential workers fed and fighting for our communities. You can donate now at clickondetroit.com slash frontline.